everybody and welcome back to another exciting episode of Coffee with FJ. My name is Father John here in the, the Pastor of Holy Family in South Deerfield, Mass. And we're again on my, my lovely porch. You know, in the last few weeks, we've been, in the Lenten season, we've been talking a lot about prayer. And prayer is certainly an essential piece and an indispensable piece of our spiritual lives as Catholics. Not just during the Lenten season, but at all times, throughout our whole lives. We've talked about, you know, the, the why do we pray and how do we pray, or, or maybe not so much the why. The why is simply because we want to have union with God. We, we want to converse with, with God, that, that God and, and we and God might have a, a particular bond and a closeness and a friendship, a fellowship. So we, when we pray, our hearts are expanded in a greater capacity to love because when we pray, we open ourselves more fully to God's love. And then by taking him in, we then have our hearts are able to give him away. You know, it's, it's uh, in order to give life, we have to receive it too. Prayer is the receiving. Not so much in the same way as the sacraments, but, but in our conversation with God, in, in spending time in, in, in his presence and in front of the Blessed Sacrament in church, you know, the why of prayer is simply to foster a deeper union and communion with God. And it's not to say that we are neglectful during, in this video series, if you will, of the other disciplines of Lent, because they're absolutely essential. I've been saying in some of my homilies over the past several weeks that, that the, the disciplines, not just of Lent, but the disciplines of our faith, the stuff of our religion, if you will, our devotions, our prayer, the teachings of the Catholic Church, right? The doctrines, the dogmas, our morals, our rites, our rituals, all of it is training ground. All of it is an aid to helping us be formed from within into a greater likeness of God. All of it aids us in becoming more a reflection of the goodness of God in our lives. We forget, I think, sometimes that really God doesn't need us, but the purpose of our lives is, to, is an exercise of his goodness, to become, to become more a reflection of the goodness of God in our lives. Prayer is a vehicle for that goodness, is an exercise in that goodness, to take him in via our own prayer, via the reception of the sacraments, and then to give him away, to give him to others in a greater capacity to love, to love as he loves. So what are the other disciplines of the Lenten season that trains us in this practice? Well, there's, there's prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Fasting and almsgiving. Are, are, are two, two things that I think we, we often neglect or they overlook. Uh, fasting has, has some deep spiritual benefits for our lives, something that we ought not, look, ought not neglect. Now, you might think to yourself, well, I like food too much. <laughs> I like food and I, I'm, I don't fast well. I don't, I'm not a good faster, if you will. And I'm gonna tell you something, neither am I. Neither am I because, you know, we have to eat, right? We have to eat to sustain our lives. And some of some people I know also have serious health issues that that prevent them from fasting from food. Fasting isn't just about food. Fasting is the ability to say no to something good. When we can deprive ourselves of something that is good and say no to it and control our desire for whatever it might be, then we can also control our desire for something bad. But we can also say no to something that is not good for our souls. It's not good for, for, that's not going to aid us in getting us to heaven, if you will. So, for example, um, you know, if we're addicted to soda, so during the Lenten season, maybe you've given up drinking soda for Lent, right? And, your ability to say no to having a Coke or a ginger ale or, you know, a Sprite or whatever the, the soda might be, 
then also you begin to learn how to control your tongue. You begin how to learn how to have better patience. Right? You begin to be able to say no also to temptations to something bad. Right? So it's about temperance, the virtue of temperance. Fasting helps us to say no to something good so that we can also say no to something that is bad. Fasting also is done in solidarity with those who are less fortunate than ourselves, those who are spiritually hungry, those who are physically hungry, right? It aids us in identifying also with those who are starving, starving for God, starving for literally for food. So, right? so it ends up being also a way to, to connect with those who are less fortunate than ourselves. Fasting has really deep spiritual benefits, and we ought not neglect it. The other um, Lenten discipline that is pertinent to, to our 40 days is almsgiving. Almsgiving is, is the giving of, of, of you know, resources, or maybe it's time, right, to others. Those, again, who are less fortunate than ourselves with regard to resources, whether it's food or, or, or money. You know, we, 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 we give of those things, not in a way that doesn't hurt. Let's remember that. In such a way that, that we're making a sacrifice for another. That's what almsgiving is. It's a sacrifice for another. You can give time. You can give monetary resources. But make sure it's a sacrifice. A sacrifice for someone who's less fortunate than ourselves. Not just something that makes us feel good because we did something nice for another person but a real sacrifice that helps us to, to identify with another, to identify, to get into their souls, to get into their hearts, to love them as Christ loved them. Fasting and almsgiving, therefore, sort of go together in that sense in helping us identify with the sufferings of others by entering into it via depriving ourselves of something good or, or giving of our time or, or of our treasure or our resources to aid someone who is less fortunate, who is suffering, by entering into that suffering. And by doing so, we then identify with that other person. This is precisely how Christ identifies with us. Jesus entered the world of human suffering. He identifies with the poor. He identifies with the spiritually poor, the physically poor, the materially poor. He identifies with sinners, with humanity. He enters our world. This is what fasting and almsgiving teach us. To enter the world of human suffering. To identify with those who, who have less than we do, who, who are less fortunate than we are. You know, and fasting doesn't always just have to be about food, too, don't forget. Fasting can be... You know, if we're addicted to TV or, uh, and here I go again, screen time, right? If we're addicted to our phones, and, and I get, you know, we're watching this on a phone, but, or, or on your tablet or whatever, but fasting isn't just about food. Because as I said earlier, some people, be, due to illnesses or, or um, you know, related dietary problems, they can't fast from food. So we pick something else, something that isn't necessarily bad, but maybe we, we spend a little too much time at screen time or, you know, um, turning the TV off. You know, maybe I watch too much of the news, which is depressing in and of itself. You know, and pick up a good spiritual book. Pick up something to read that, that gives, that aids in, in your spiritual journey. The, the, the point of all this really is to say that the disciplines of our faith you know, is training in holiness. But it opens our hearts in a greater capacity to love. Right? The teachings of the church help to form our minds and our conscience. Our prayers and our devotions help to form our hearts in love. Right? The disciplines, the practices of penances, sacrifice, almsgiving, fasting, trains our bodies in discipline to identify with others. Right? So this is training ground for virtue. It's training in holiness. And with a little humility of heart, an openness of spirit, these things allow us to be formed 
by God, be formed by the church from within. And then what is what lies within us then becomes an exercise in the goodness of God. It comes out in the way we live our lives. And that will be known and noticed by others. We will begin to reflect that which we what we take in, which is namely God. So my prayer for you during this Lenten season is that is that these disciplines, what we've taken on, prayer, fasting, and almsgiving, that this training in holiness helps you to exercise more fully the goodness of God in your life, that you may reflect Him more fully, not just during Lent, but every day of your life. So may, my, may Almighty God bless you during this Lenten season and always, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Have a great day, everyone.